The Eurocodes are design standards for buildings and civil engineering works, and they've also covered geotechnical design. And what they do is they enable designers to make sure that their designs are safe, serviceable, robust, and durable. And they do that by including requirements, recommendations, and advice. Essentially, what they do is they set out performance expectations, and they include methods that enable those expectations to be fulfilled. The Eurocodes are structured into a series of standards. Each of those standards is then subdivided into a number of parts. And importantly, the Eurocodes, each Eurocode is also accompanied by a national annex. And those national annex contain what we term NDPs, nationally determined parameters, that the Eurocodes allow to be set at a national level. Standards are simply a document that sets out an agreed way of doing something. They essentially capture and record best practices. But they have two other key characteristics. The first is that they're developed through a process of consensus building amongst experts and other parties, stakeholders with an interest in a particular field. And finally, they're documents that are approved by a recognized body, such as Senate at a European level or ISO internationally, or by a national standards body, an NSB at a national level. It's really important to understand that standards and regulations have a relationship, but they are different things. So regulations are essentially legal or statutory requirements. They, they define things that you have to do. You know, standards in essence are voluntary documents. Um, they are developed to help people in industry to do perform particular activities or to define the characteristics of particular products. The status of standards is really related to the way in which they are referenced or cited. So they can be made essentially mandatory if they're cited in a regulation or they can have status bestowed upon them um, because they are referenced within a contract for a particular project. The standards essentially define an accepted way of doing something. Now, if you have different national standards in different countries, then anyone providing a product or a service is going to have to adapt the way in which they provide that product or service to meet those local requirements. International standards remove those barriers. They've been hugely important, actually, in reducing like, the degree of bureaucracy across Europe. Um, the development of European standards, agreed European standards, that have replaced national standards have enabled thousands and thousands of national standards to be withdrawn. Responsibility for the development of the Eurocodes rests with CEN, the European Committee for Standardization. And CEN is an association that brings together 34 national standards bodies across Europe. CEN has between 300 and 400 technical committees, and it's Technical Committee 250, as we call it TC250, that's got responsibility for the Eurocodes. Now, the scope of TC250 is defined as being design standards, design requirements for buildings and civil engineering works. But also importantly, the scope of TC250 extends to recognize the interdependence between those design standards that we're responsible for, but also the associated requirements for products, testing, uh, and also the way things are built, the execution requirements. The Eurocodes don't operate in isolation. The Eurocodes function as part of a family of standards that service the construction sector. You know, as design standards, the Eurocodes play a central, a really important role, but they have to work in, in, in partnership as companion standards uh, that set out requirements for products or for testing or um, requirements for the way in which things are built at execution standards. And just to explain that a little bit, you know, it's inherent, if you're say designing a steel element to take account of the possibility with my buckle and, and the point at which it might buckle is sensitive to any lack of straightness there might be in that steel element. And so what we do within the Eurocodes is we make assumptions uh, about tolerances. And of course, we therefore need a companion standard for the products and the companion standards for the way things are built to make sure that those tolerances aren't exceeded. Mm -hmm.